your home lab probably needs this. If you're anything above using either like a single mini computer, old desktop or laptop as your home lab, chances are you're gonna need one of these. This is a UPS. Specifically, what I have here is the Smart Pro LCD UPS from Triplight. They sent this over to me to review, which I'm very happy that they did because at least in my area, I'm on the eastern side of Washington, we get some major winds and because of those winds, the power flickers. Like I said, if you're anything above a single device or something for your home lab, you're gonna want something like this because if you have a bunch of data moving between devices, you have disks spinning, a single power surge or power disconnect real quick can cause data loss or even worse, actually damage the hardware in your computer or NAS or server, whatever you happen to be using. These things, these UPSs are basically big batteries. The one I have specifically, the Smart 1500 has a lead acid battery in it, so it is a rather honky and beefy boy. Granted, it is a 2U unit, so it fits in there real nice. You can see here it supports half load, so 450 watts at 12 minutes and 900 watts at 4 minutes. So if you're using it at full load, it's still enough time for it to send a signal to all your devices to give it a proper shutdown. Me, I am not using it at full capacity. I didn't need to get something this extreme. I could have gotten much lower spec machine. I think if power goes out right now, I got about 45 minutes, because really, the only things I have plugged into it, I have my Unraid machine, which hosts all the media. I have our Synology NAS, which hosts like all my backup stuff. And then we have a Intel Nook, which hosts the media server itself. Those devices are constantly talking to each other, exchanging data, moving files around. So having something like this is very good. Looking into the unit I have here specifically, it does have a good amount of I.O. There's a telephone cable ports and all kinds of things. The most important for my use case is one, of course, the power outlets it includes eight of them and also the USB port. This USB port is how I get a computer, a device, something to talk to it to recognize if it is running off a of battery power, what that battery percentage is at so then it can communicate with the other devices. In this video, what I'm gonna do real quick is show you a script that you can use to install a NUT server, which is how you can actually see what is going on your UPS on just about any device. And then I'm gonna show you my personal use case, which is using my Synology device as the main server. The USB is actually plugged directly into the Synology from the UPS. And then that Synology will talk to the other machines, such as my Unraid machine, telling it what is going on so then it can shut itself off properly. But you know what you don't need a UPS? That is right, a Linode on Akamai Connected Cloud. Your Linodes are hosted in giant databases with generators, so power issues is not going to be your concern. And setting up one is really easy. You can pick between a bunch of different Linux distributions, including Debian, Arch, really whatever you need, or even something like a Minecraft server up and running with ease. And better yet, for new users, you can get a $100 60-day credit at the link down below. And to actually set this up, what we're going to be doing is using the Network UPS Tools or the NUT project. Now, thankfully, one of the employees over at Eaton created a really nice script for us. So if we check it out, it'll take us to this GitHub page right here, which will show us how to monitor our UPS with free software. Now, you could do this with just about anything. You use a Raspberry Pi, your pre-existing server, and you can see on this Ubuntu server, I went ahead, updated it, typed LS USB, and we can see I do have my Trip Light UPS plugged in here via USB. So from there, I'm gonna go ahead and proceed and use their script, which makes this incredibly easy. If you're gonna use this, I do recommend you read through. It goes over some of the devices it supports. This is the device that I have, so it's going to be supported. If you don't have a supported device, Again, using software that's built in with whatever NAS software you happen to be using works great. The NUT project also has Docker containers that are really easy to set up. Or if you check out this video right here by Techno Tim, this is a much longer in-depth video of all the specific customization and configuration to do this manually yourself. So that will be linked down below if that's something you're interested in. But for this video, we are simply going to use the script. We have a prerequisite supported UPS, a Linux computer that uses the APT package manager. Just installed NeoFetch real quick. This is in fact a Ubuntu server, as you can see here. Pseudo privileges, USB connection. We just tested that out with the LS USB command. We have our connection. They want some open ports. I'm not gonna open those ports externally. All the devices on my home network can communicate with each other. 
none of these packages installed, which I'm pretty sure I do not. And now we will run through the process. So I am currently in my root directory. You can see there, I'm gonna do this in a temp directory real quick. So I'm gonna make directory temp and then CD into that directory. And then what I'm gonna do is copy this command right here, paste it on in, which will download that script for us hit enter and there we go. So now we're gonna make it executable with this command, which is a chmod x, paste that on in, hit enter, and now we can run the script. So it's just sudo and then the normal command to run things. So let's paste that on in and then simply follow the prompts. So important, you're gonna run a apt update, which I did just run in the uh, sake of time. I don't have any of these packages installed, so do I want to assume the risk? I'm gonna say yes for now. It recommends that we do what I already did, which was run the apt update so it's not having to do too much. I'm gonna say yes, it can go ahead and do that if it would like to. And now it's asking for my smpv2 community string. So if I scroll down here, this is basically gonna be a password for our SM or SNMP server, which again is one of the methods to go ahead and connect. So for example, Right here, I could do either, and then we have an SMMP if I wanted to connect this as a client. So I'm gonna give it a simple password, I'll change it a little bit later, but for now, I'll just call it Hopkey UPS, as that just seems to be the prefix of uh, most things on my home network. I'm gonna hit enter, and now it's gonna run through, install all the packages, and get most of everything set up for us. We have a service to be restarted. I'm just gonna go ahead and proceed. And it's doing a lot of the configuration for us. So you can see UPS Network Tools. It's discovered and found the USB device. It's installing some of the drivers for us. It is now connecting to our UPS. And now it's creating a lot of files. It's doing a whole bunch of different things. I'm gonna go ahead and actually restart that service so that stops popping up. And there we go. We should now be able to see our cool UPS statistics at this page right here. I'm gonna control click it. There we go. The 192.168. Put in your actual local IP address of the server you just installed this on. Hit enter. Uh, maybe let's get rid of this. We are, we can see that we are online. We can see our model, our system, our battery runtime, which is incredibly important. That's how long that will actually get on our current percent of load if power does go out. Now we have a couple links here. If I go in and click on all data, it's gonna give us a rundown of a lot of the information about our actual UPS here. And if we go back and then click right here, this is gonna give us some nice charts to see a little bit better and more visually what is going on. More specific numbers when it comes to the voltage of output, input, runtime, general status, time, and all that. Now doing it this way is perfectly fine. And honestly, if you do plan on doing this, I do recommend you check out the video by Techno Tim goes into way more detail on how to connect devices to your custom nut server and a bunch of different things. Really good video if you're trying to do all this kind of custom. Me, I am not doing it custom. I am using good old Unraid as well as Synology. Starting with Synology, I mentioned earlier that my actual UPS is plugged directly into the Synology. So this is kind of our host server. And it does a pretty good job at that. If we go over here to the control panel and we open up hardware and power, Go over to UPS. You can see I have UPS support enabled and I have it set to USB UPS. If I go to device information, you can see it is successfully connected. It's really just plug and play when hooking it up into Synology. We do have uh, some settings here. We have until low battery, which I'm not honestly sure what that means. I contacted Synology. They said that's up to the actual UPS, so I need to kind of Figure that out. If you know, let me know down below. Here, enable network UPS server. That is what I did to connect uh, Unraid to it. And then right here, I have my actual Unraid server. And this is the IP of the computer that I initially set this up on. You're going to need to allow access to both of the device and whatever computer you're using because there's actually a process to set the password and all that, which I found out here. One of the things I really love about Unraid is their forms in the community. Chances are, if you have a problem, somebody's gonna answer you. Somebody's had the same problem before. Or being premium paid software, they have a really active community. And this right here, it's a rather old thread, but it was still the solution I needed nonetheless. This person goes over the same issue I was having, trying to connect a Unraid device to a Synology host. And kind of reading through all their troubleshooting steps kind of led me to what I needed to do, what started here. If we go over to my Unraid device here, if we go over to settings, you can see that there is UPS settings here. This is not what we're going to want to use. To actually set up a NUT server on Unraid here, we're going to go over to applications. You can just search for NUT. 
and this will bring a whole bunch of applications and plugins that you can go ahead and pull. Right here is the one I'm using, the Nut Network UPS Tools. You just install that, and then under Settings, it adds a new one specifically for Nut, which is what Stranology is using to host it in their backend. So we click on that, and you can see some of the settings I have. The current runtime left 41 minutes, that's pretty close. Battery life is 100%, so it's all up and connected just fine. Now to get it connected properly, we have our IP there, we have this set up as a slave, service is enabled, but getting the usernames and passwords here is the uh, problem, generally speaking. And that was found out back over here on this thread. Somebody down here gave this, you end up having to do a telnet command into your Synology NAS with this port, which is the port that the NUT server is running on. And when you're in there, you could type some commands. But you can see here the following commands, username, password. And then they just have a bunch of examples of the commands they used. So I just use this to set it up. So again, big shout out to the uh, community forms over there on uh, Unraid. So boom, connected that up. If I go and disable this real quick, I'll be able to show you some of the options we have within this little application. There we go. So here we have battery level. I do like this a little bit better because it can be uh, more specific on what is going on. You can set a certain battery level. I have it set to 40% because I'm assuming the Synology low battery is like 20 or 25%, hopefully. Because if I have this set lower than that, the uh, <laughs> Synology will put itself in suspension mode, turn off before it has the opportunity to send out the signal to turn off Unraid, which would not be good so yeah i'm gonna go ahead and uh, fire this back up real quick to make sure that i don't forget that it's very important so there we go and uh also another thing i like more about unraid i'm probably don't tell synology this but i'm probably gonna switch to unraid as my main thing eventually i do like synology software though it's really really good at least as far as like the uh reverse proxies photo backups things like that virtual machines too but here on unraid you can see it gives us a lot more information as compared to the uh, device information that Synology gives us. We have the status, the shutdown timer, the driver version, a bunch of different things. So basically, a uh, UPS is something you are at least eventually going to need in your home lab. It's something you should probably budget for. Uh, it's really important to actually kind of do a calculation, figure out how much power you're actually going to need so you don't spend it more, like two, three hundred dollars more than you need to on a UPS. And with all that, I do hope you enjoyed this video. If you have never checked out Unraid before, it's definitely something worth checking out. When it comes to your options of like NAS software, it's personally one of my favorites that you could just download and put on anything. With all that, hope you have a beautiful day.